Hello friends, I just logged in. This is Chef Sharon Hackman, the chef and founder of Hacks. I'll give it a few minutes and let some people log in over here. Hope everyone's having a beautiful day. Hi guys. I'll wait about a minute or two, let everyone kind of come in and then uh, we'll get started. Welcome to my kitchen. This is my test kitchen at our office. This is where all the magic happens between this kitchen and actually the kitchen that I built out in my garage is where I do all my research and development, all my, um, all my recipes, all my formulas. This is where it all happens. This is where I have fun. So you guys are in for a treat today. I'll give you guys a little story about who I am, uh, where I come from, why I do what, what I do. Um, I'll share a recipe, a very simple one, but one that seems to be doing really well over this uh, holiday season. And um, from there, kind of hopefully give you guys some takeaways, some cool kind of cooking techniques, and then also maybe some cool inspiring stories about my journey and how I got to where I'm at. Um, and maybe we can close out with some questions at the end. So hello everybody. Again, I'll get started now. My name is Chef Sharon Hackman. I am the chef and founder of Chef Hacks. Um, it's a play off my last name. My nickname's always been Hack. That's what my name was on, uh, on my basketball team. Not, just be, not because I follow people, just because my last name's Hackman and that was the short, um, short way of calling me. So um, I started my company about 10 years ago, uh, literally about 10 years ago, just now. And um, before that, I actually uh, was in finance. I was a vice president at uh, Wells Fargo a bank. I was in the finance industry. And the funny thing was here, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. This is my, again, my test kitchen at our office um, in West Hollywood. I grew up not too far from here, born and raised here in LA. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was in high school, um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was one of those guys that didn't really have much direction. Uh, I was always jealous of some of my friends that sort of like, oh, I know I want to do this. Like, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. Or I want to do this. I want to be in social work. I wasn't that guy. I, I really didn't know. I played sports. I loved that. I knew I couldn't make the NBA. I was a decent basketball player, but not good enough to make it pro. And I got stuck. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So um, I had a friend of mine <clears throat> who got into finance. And the funny thing was... Um, I had no interest in finance. I had no background in finance, but he was making good money and his older brother had a brand new Porsche. And I was like, whoa, I wanna do what this guy does. So I started working in finance. Uh, the funny thing was I learned a lot in finance and I kind of carved my way through there. Um, I started at the age of 18, got my insurance license at 19, got my stockbroker's license at 20 and started doing that. Um, and the funny thing is, is I started making money like I was expecting to do. But unfortunately, I realized later on in my life, I'd say probably in my mid twenties, um, that it just wasn't what I was passionate about. It wasn't what I truly loved to do. Um, and I never gave myself the opportunity to go explore that and figure that out and say, man, what is it that really gets me excited? What gets me going? Uh, while I talk, I'll give you guys a quick intro. Hold on. I'm slicing Brussels sprouts. And what you guys, what, the recipe I'm gonna share with you all today is very simple. I've got a package of it. You may have seen it, you may have not, but this is one of our new products. Um, it's a great recipe. It did extremely well during Thanksgiving. This is my pan roasted Brussels sprouts and we uh, garnish it with crispy bacon bits and dried cranberries. Very simple, very hearty, very seasonal. A really good holiday dish. And we sell this at Costco. Um, so when I kind of tell you more about my story, I'm not the chef that has the restaurant. I'm the chef that makes products that you buy in grocery stores around the country. That's what I do. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. And I'll, I'll kind of leave you with this idea of what gets me excited is like, hey, if somebody wants to try my food and I'm a chef at a restaurant, wherever they live, they've got to drive all the way out or fly all the way out. And how many people can I feed at my restaurant? hundred, 200 people a night, 300 if I'm really crushing it. The idea of being able to take my food home across the country to whoever wants it can have my food is like, 
That's my jam. That's what makes me happy. That's what excites me. So that's the recipe we're gonna share. It's my, again, roasted Brussels sprouts with crispy bacon and cranberry. So <clears throat> I'll get back right now. I'm just slicing up some uh, Brussels sprouts. I'm just having them. Whole fresh Brussels sprouts and I'm just having them. So I'll get back to the story and I was like, all right, well, I, again, I was making money and I wasn't really passionate about what I, you know, about it. It wasn't something that I got out of bed. I'm like, oh my God, this is what like just really gets me going. This is what drives me. This is what fuels me. I didn't really have much of that. Um, and the funny thing was back in 2000, what was it, 2008, 2009, when like the market, the stock market crashed and all that crazy stuff was going on, whatever little passion I had for it completely sort of gone away, went away. And I found myself over those years, I always come home and cook. It was what I love to do. I would just come home, I would go to farmer's markets, I'd explore really great seasonal vegetables and produce and different proteins and just have fun, I'd get in the kitchen and I was really good at it. And um, my friends always loved my cooking and whatnot. And then so when I, you know, when I lost that like excitement for, for finance and, and whatnot, I um, was like, all right, well, what do I want to do? Well, I quit my job and I was going to take a leave of absence and I was actually going to go cook in Italy for six months and then in Israel for six months. And a couple months before we're supposed to take off, my wife got pregnant um, and we were going to have a baby. So that kind of like put the brakes on. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to be a dad. I lost you guys. There we go. There's no way I could go out and get cooking um, in restaurants when I'm about to have a baby. So I actually got serious. I was like, all right, I'm about to be a dad. I'm gonna get to work. I just seasoned it with a little bit of avocado oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna get it in the oven at about 400 degrees. So here's what we're doing. I go back to work and my son's born. And then I got hit. And I think that you guys would really dig this because I had this really cool moment of clarity. I had the moment of clarity that I had was just like, listen, we're here. We get one shot, right? We get one shot at life. We're here, we're here now, I'm here now. And like, do I wanna spend the rest of my life doing what I'm supposed to be doing or doing what I'm truly passionate about doing? And that kind of hit me really hard, really hard. And I actually left my job and I had a whole bunch of different papers. Um, I don't have them in front of me, but like, you know, those yellow notepad papers. Um, and I'd write down all these ideas and a lot of them were all food related. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna get into food. And then a friend of mine told me about a show that you guys may know called Master Chef, Gordon Ramsay and whatnot. And she's like, you should audition for it. Like, you're really good, go give it a shot. I said, all right, I will. I'll pop these in the oven. And so I did, and next thing I know, I was on MasterChef, and I had a blast on it. Um, it was the first season, if you guys wanna check it out on Hulu. Um, and I walked away from MasterChef knowing like, God, this is my gene, this is what I love. I love food, I, I love cooking, I love challenges. Um, I had a really good time on that show, and I was like, all right. Now I finally realized like, this gets me excited. I'm really passionate about this, this is really cool. So, I got into food. Um, and when I got into food, I was like, all right, well then what do I do? How do I figure this out? So I had this finance background. Um, I just got some bacon and I'll give you guys a little trick. You may know this, you may not, but the way I get to slice my bacon without having it break apart and turn into like crazy mush pile is keep your bacon really cold. If your bacon's super cold, you can slice into it better and it won't break apart with you and all the fat won't spread around. So that's how I'm able to get a nice slice right through. I cut it in half lengthwise, and then I just cut these little lardons, which I'm going to fry up and make this kitchen smell really good. So <clears throat> again, I walked away from MasterChef, like stoked, I'm like, this is what I wanna do, and I had to figure out, all right, how do I get into food? So I started working in restaurants. Um, I worked at some great restaurants here in LA. But I realized real quickly, I had this more entrepreneurial, sort of big picture idea in this vision. Um, and that's where Chef Hacks was born. That's where I started my company. Um, on MasterChef, I made my barbecue sauce. 
for about 2,500 Marines down in Camp Pendleton. And Gordon was like, that's the best bad word barbecue sauce I've ever had. And it went down on my notepad and I made it. I went down to a local facility, I put a deposit down. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It was this very bottle, you may have seen it before. It's my Chipotle bourbon barbecue sauce. This is the first product I ever made. First product I ever made. And I stored it in my apartment, I went door to door selling barbecue sauce. So when you think about ego, you think about pride, you think about like, oh, I can't do this, or I'm challenged, like, you know, I swallowed it all up. I was a vice president of the bank. I loaded up my backpack and I went to restaurants literally in this neighborhood here, just selling it and got rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected. Everyone was like, I don't need barbecue sauce here. And I had no background, no idea, no understanding of, of what the industry, industry was like, what you know, packaged foods were like, what margins needed to be at. Those are all like way beyond my understanding at that point. But part of it was just stumbling forward. And I think that's one of the best pieces of advice that I can give anyone is, you know, a lot of times you can create a lot of roadblocks for yourself mentally. You can psych yourself out and say, I can't do this. I don't understand this. This is too complicated. Where do I start? Where do I go? I'll tell you guys, it just starts with taking one step forward. It just starts with giving something a shot. All right. One thing I can promise you is if you don't try, it'll never happen. So you might as well give something a shot. And that's what I did. And I got a whole bunch of rejections. And then finally, after two years, I mean, there's a lot of other stories in there, but after two years, I was calling on Whole Foods. I found out who the local buyer for Whole Foods was. And I was calling on him for two years and he rejected my call. Every two weeks I would follow up and I got nothing. So talk about feeling let down, talk about feeling like, disappointed or frustrated or challenged. All those feelings were there, but I just kept at it. And I finally got two stores for Whole Foods and I did my own demos. You know, I got into there, I delivered my own sauce and that's really how it started. And we grew from two stores to four stores, to six stores, to 10 stores, to 20 stores and so on. And you know, you can do the math, but it's been um, 10 years now since I started my company. And it's been a heck of a ride. We have over a hundred SKUs. And when I look at our master product list and all the different items that we offer, I kind of scratch my head I'm like, how did all this happen? When did this happen? But we have over a hundred SKUs, a hundred items that are now in the market and people use. And we've grown our company just, you know, from packaged foods like our sauces and our meals to components and items that people use in the back of the house for food service and universities, um, in hospitals right now, um, across the board. And um, it's, you know, <clears throat> I'm not gonna say it's easy, because I'd be, I'd be lying to you all. I'll grab this and I'll go a little bit more. I'll turn my angle over here. Um, I'm not gonna say it's easy. Hold, hold it this way. So, all right, cool, we're in here. So I'm sauteing some bacon. And we're just going to get those nice and crisp in the meantime. Perfect. Get you a view there. And then we've got our Brussels sprouts that are roasting in the oven. Again, 400. And I'm going to get these nice and crisp. I'm actually going to turn them up a little bit higher because I like them nice and crispy, almost like, you know, a little char on them. All right, perfect. So uh, where was I? I was telling you guys the... Uh, the idea of, of being challenged, right? And so <clears throat> being challenged, because we got time to talk now. Um, we just got my cranberries and then we'll get right into it. Um, is you're gonna face adversity. Um, and I think no matter what, I think we're all dealing it with, uh, we're all dealing with it to some extent now with COVID, right? Whether you're in business, whether you're in school, um, your families, if somebody's affected by COVID or not, right? I think we're all dealing with adversity in one way, shape, or form. Um, and it's not fun. Adversity is not fun. Like, we don't like feeling uncomfortable. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a good feeling. Um, however, I truly find that adversity um, is where you have an opportunity to learn more about who you are and, you know, and 
think the best way I can put it for you is outside of just learning about more about who you are, it's about also elevating yourself in a certain way. And what I mean by that is when you're challenged, you have a choice. You can back off and you can say, no, 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 I don't really want to get involved in that. Like, that's too much for me. Or you can rise up. You can step up to it. You can overcome that fear. You can overcome that adversity. And you would be surprised and amazed with what you discover within yourself about who you are and also what you're able to accomplish in, face of, in the face of adversity. Um, and so when I had moments of adversity within my business, and I deal with it all the time, and this year with COVID has been no different, you know? I think for my business, just a little honest talk with you all, I mean, our business, what looks like this year versus what our food business looked like last year, got rocked with COVID. Um, but again, we're faced with adversity and we made the choice of rising up and stepping up to that adversity. And, um, you know, again, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's, it's growth and it's beautiful and it's, it's great when you, uh, when you learn more about yourself and you see what that, you know, you, know, you just, I can't put it in words. It's an incredible feeling. When you're faced, your back's against the wall. I'm sure you all have your own stories um, and you're all, you know, your own experiences of that when you rise up. And um, my advice to you all, whether you're in culinary school, whether you are trying to figure out what your next steps are in life or um, you're at a crossroad or you've been thinking about something for a very long time um, and you're like, God, I really want to do this. You've had this burning desire to do it inside. You have this gut feeling inside. Um, I'm here to tell you to listen to it. I'm here to tell you to give it a shot. I'm here to tell you to um, figure it out and go out there and do it. Um, you know, tell fear, I don't need you. I can use you and I don't need you in my life right now. Like, tell fear to take a hike and embrace, um, embrace the challenge Embrace the discovery process of learning about who you are and where you come from and what you're made of, right? And enjoy the ride as well, because um, that's what life is all about. And I think that's what I've learned as difficult um, and as fun as these past 10 years in the food world has been for me in creating all these amazing products and seeing our products in grocery stores and club stores and offices and restaurants and hotels across the country. like. You know, I kind of pinch myself because it's been really hard. It hasn't been easy, but it's been beautiful. Um, and I'll kind of transition that into a, um, a kind of really important thing when you think about those principles is <clears throat> always know who you are inside. And I think that's been something that's helped guide me over the years. Um, and I'll elaborate. I'll explain to you guys what I mean by that. Basically, you're going to deal with challenges. You're going to have issues. No matter how you look at it, that is life. I mean, that's part of being alive and present. Like, you know, I think it's very rare that you don't get dealt a set of challenges. And I think it's actually challenges and adversity is really important because that's, again, where you learn most about yourself, right? That being said, having a foundation and having an understanding of what your core values are, are very important. So for me, and if I look at what I do every day with my business and, and the products that we make, there's very simple principles that are the answers to everything that I do. A, I'll never make a product that I won't give my own family and kids. It's that simple. If their ingredients, like most of all the products that we make, if not all of them almost are organic, right? Um, if I won't give it to my kids, I won't make the product. Why would I give it to you? Why would I package it? Why would I produce it and give it to anybody? I wouldn't. Very, like, I just wouldn't do it. That's number one. Very easy, right? Yes or no? Would I give it to my kids? Yes, great. It'll go into a product and I'll make it. And the second thing, it's gotta taste good, right? I mean, that's why we like food, right? If it doesn't taste good, then what's the point? So I like the idea of our customers and people who buy our food to understand and, and feel like, hey, I am going to have something that I know is clean that is mindfully sourced for me. And I also know it's gonna taste good. And then three, right? The third piece is, can I make your life a little easier? So here's a perfect demonstration, right? 
we've been on. I've had the opportunity to talk to you guys and, you know, share a little bit about my story and whatnot. And in the interim, I've been prepping some Brussels sprouts. I've been, you know, pan, pan roasting some, uh, some bacon. Third piece is, can I make it easy for you? And that's what my products are. It's like, hey, I'm going to take the leg work out. The same work that I've done over here is ready packaged, ready to go. You just pull it out and you have to heat it up. So did I save you 30 minutes of time that you could be doing something else, like being with your family or focusing on something else or doing something else? Those are the three core principles of what I do. And so essentially every product and every decision and every idea that I have runs through those three principles. And if they all check the box, it makes the decision that much easier for me. So I would suggest and I would tell you all that when you think about things that you want to do, truly connect with what your core principles are. Connect with those in a deep, real way and say, what matters to me? What's meaningful to me? And if those things are meaningful to you, you write those meaningful things down. And then every decision that you make in your journey, whether that's in your career, your friends, your family, like need to align with those core principles that are meaningful to you. And if they don't, it makes a decision of saying no or moving away from it very, very simple. And I think, you know, that may seem to you, to some of you or some not like, oh, that's a good idea or oh, no. I honestly would say that is so important. Um, and so many of us don't do that. We don't really spend the time to understand like what matters to me, what's valuable to me. And when you do that and you truly write those, th those things down, like I just shared my principles with you when it comes to what we do in our business, it makes a lot of decisions very, very simple. It really does. You literally run it right through and say, does it check the box? And if it does, you're good to go. And if it doesn't check the box, it, you know, decision's been made for you. Okay, beautiful. Let's jump back into food. Take a look. There's our bacon. It looks beautiful. What we're looking for is that golden brown caramelization off of it. See that? Happy. All right. And then furthermore, I'm gonna open up our Brussels sprouts and we'll take a look at how these boys are rust, roasting up. Yep, we're just about there. I got a nice char on them. I'll probably say another minute or so, I'm gonna get my plate set up. And we're gonna plate these bad boys. While I get ready for that, let me open it up and see if anybody has any questions that they wanna ask me. Uh, feel free to jump in. See if there's any questions. Scrolling down. Still scrolling here. No, I haven't seen any questions yet. Hi guys, I got a lot of hellos and hellos. Hello everybody. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here and get a chance to connect with you all. Does anybody have any personal questions or, you know, I don't know, things that you want to know? Take this as an opportunity to just pick my brain or, you know, whatever guidance or feedback or understanding that I can help provide. I'm here. You have me. So um, I had one question come in from Carol. Of all my sauces, which one is my fave? That is the hardest question that I get. That's, that's sort of like asking me who my favorite kid is because it's hard. They're, they're, I make them all. Um, this one, I mean, the one that I pulled out here is the most meaning because there's just such a journey. I, I mean, this is the first product that I made and it's my barbecue sauce and that's just sort of how I started the business. But I would say, the, the product that I probably use the most is my olive oil and lemon vinaigrette. It's simple, but it's my favorite. Um, let's see if I have a bottle in the fridge. I probably do. If not, I have a packet for sure. Ah, voila. It's my organic olive oil lemon salad dressing. It's great. Hi, Brooke. Um, that's probably my go-to and I use it most, uh, most often. It's healthy, it's clean. I probably, I use it to marinate. I use it on my salads, of course. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, 
Oh, since it's a seed, do I have a favorite latke recipe? Actually, believe it or not, tomorrow I'm doing a tutorial on my latke recipe. And I do. It's my very own, but it's an adaptation of my grandma's latke recipe. And it is really good. So tune in, and we will post that on our social, and I will share the recipe with you. I'll have a more traditional latke, and then one that I just sort of elevate and chef up a little bit and make a little bit more fan, uh, a little bit more fun. Um, what process do you go through before you add a new item to your line? That's a great question. Um, we go through multiple processes, um, and, and it's kind of layered. Well, first of all, I think the first thing that I look for is does the product provide something new or different, or does it elevate a category, okay? Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, if I'm gonna make a product that's identical or the same as anything else, what value is that? So I just gave you guys an example of my salad dressing. You asked me like, all right, what's my favorite? Um, so the one that I use more, my olive oil and lemon dressing, right? So let's talk about it. Why another dressing? You're like, oh, well, that's nothing new. There's dressings everywhere. Okay, so what do we do different? First of all, our dressings are organic. There's not a lot of organic players in our set, okay? So that's something that's a clear differentiator. Two, the flavor profiles. I look to elevate and bring new flavors. Yes, we have ranch. Yes, we have Caesar. But I have avocado lime. I have some really fun, unique flavors. I also have a lot of plant-based dressings. They're very popular and trendy right now. People are going on a lot of plant-based diets. So I have a plant-based ranch. I have a plant-based Caesar. Furthermore, the ingredients. People are reading more. Um, and I urge everyone to read more. Look at the ingredient decks on all these products, right? When you look at mine, this product has five ingredients, right? Extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, a little bit of thyme, lemon juice, very simple things. I'm very mindful of the ingredients that I use in here. We don't use highly processed oils. I don't use soybean oil. I don't use canola oil. I don't use ingredients that a lot of other companies uh, use, and that helps them obviously make the product that costs less. We don't take those shortcuts. And so that's, that's kind of our approach and that's how I look at it. Like, can I add something unique? Can I be different than somebody else? And then most importantly, again, it's gotta taste good. Um, I'll keep going on some questions. Um, I got a question from Extravagant. Do you, have any, uh, do you have any ideas on how you want to expand your brand more? Or any other goals for your company? Oh my God, that's, that's a big question. I mean, I think with this year and COVID and a lot of you who are in culinary school and trying to figure that out and you're seeing the news and you're hearing about all these restaurants um, shutting down, opening, shutting down and you hear about a lot of people going out of business. I think that must be scary for you all, especially because you put probably, you're either in culinary school or just recently finished culinary school. I'm sure that you're, you're scared or you have your fears or your doubts. You're like, oh my God, the timing isn't right. Guys, I, I don't have an answer to say like, yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's tough. But I will say that you've got to dig deep. You've got to be resilient. You've got to find a way. Um, and that comes out with being two things, persistent, pushing hard, right? And keeping an open mind. Um, if one door is closed, right? And you can't seem to knock, you know, knock it down and figure it out, you find another door. You stay persistent, okay? You stay resilient. You keep trying. You keep figuring it out, all right? Don't put your hands up and give up because that's not going to help you in any way. So I think in the same way I've learned this year, what we expected this year to do in sales with certain products, we had a whole line of products with ready-to-go salads. Like a perfect example, we had a whole line of products of ready-to-go salads, organic, ready-to-eat salads that people can take. You're busy. You're going to work. You don't have time. Healthy. And guess what? COVID happened and everyone's now stuck at home and no one's on the go. No one's grabbing salads and eating them out. That whole channel, that whole product line just died right in front of us. But we didn't give up. We found other ways to win. And so that's a great example of just finding other ways, finding other paths. Um, where are you making your products? How did you learn to scale up the recipes? Oh, that's a great question too. We make our products in multiple facilities across the country. And scaling them up is a process and it comes down to being very, very specific. There's one thing about cooking in the kitchen like we just did right now. And there's another thing that if I scale this up, the exact roast time, the exact amount of grams, the ratios have to be done right. 
you got to commercialize it. Can it scale at a large oven? It's not as easy as doing it in the little toaster oven that I just did here. So there's a lot of process behind R&D that goes into that. And then I've got a question from Brooke. What new products are we working on? I'm really excited about a couple products. One product in particular is our, uh, I've got a line of buffalo chicken lollipops. And I wonder if I have a sample here that I still have left, but I do not. They're all gone. They all went out. Uh, these, are air, um, these are heritage heirloom pastured chickens from a biodynamic farm. They're incredible. It's a sustainable farm. They do an amazing job with the chickens um, and their lollipops. So obviously, as you know, they're pulled off the bone and they're, and they're lollipopped. Um, and they're tossed in a buffalo sauce. They're baked, not fried. You just heat them back up and eat them. They're so yummy. I'm really excited about that. We've got a line of organic pizzas coming out next year as well. I'd say those two items I'm really excited about. And who in my family do I enjoy cooking for the most? All of them. I will enjoy cooking for everyone in my family. Um, I have a blast doing it. Um... Uh, is the chicken keto? Yes. The pizzas are not keto. We might have one keto pizza coming out that's like very seed and nut based, but um, to be determined. For sure, they're organic and they are going to be gluten free. Um, so let me plate this up over here. I'll try to do this with one hand if I can. Hopefully it all cooled down. So let's see here. I'll grab this up and I will just put our Brussels sprouts right here in the middle. And again, this is, I mean, this is just a yummy dish, obviously very holiday centric. We did this for Thanksgiving with our partners over at Costco and it did extraordinarily well. People loved it. Again, it comes in a big tray like this, feeds a big family of four and you just, the, the uh, trays microwave and oven safe, just heat it up and you're good to go. So we'll just grab some of the bacon. Look at that beautiful crispy bacon. And I'll take a spoon and ladle some crispy bacon right over our Brussels sprouts. Like so. And last but not least, I've got some organic cranberries. It's hard to reach. Here. and we will just garnish it with some cranberries and there we have it right roasted brussels sprouts with crispy bacon and cranberries well everybody um i hope that was informative i hope maybe there are a couple little tidbits and nuggets of information or something that you can take away whether that was a cooking tip or just uh you know, a little nugget of information based on my journey that I could help, you know, shed some perspective on or give you some better clarity on. Um, sending you all love, be safe, be well, and take care. Bye, everyone.